Hi, I'm Shanette Harper, and welcome to Alaska Filmmakers, a program dedicated to exploring the many talented individuals working in the Alaska film industry. We have with us today two Alaskan filmmakers who have recently been entertaining the local community with not only their stories, but with their music as well. Their short film entitled Way Up North was showcased in the 2008 Anchorage International Film Festival and won awards for their best editing and best short film, the 2009 Beverly Hills Film Festival. Today their company, Crooked Pictures, is dedicated to telling more Alaskan stories through the arts. Alaska Filmmakers is proud to have the program writer, director Levi Taylor and CEO of Crooked Pictures, Brad Swenson. So gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing great, Jeanette, thanks. Well, I wanted to find out, where did you guys start with your production? Like, where was the beginning? Maybe you should start. You're older. That's, that's a good so point. So if we're going to start in the beginning, he'd go first. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I am a lot older than you are. Now. Just a little bit. So we'll start with Brad. Well, then. so um, my background is really music. I, I come from a musical family. I've always loved music, uh, theater, uh, musicals, singing anything that was music related and actually went to college to study music theory and composition. And uh, unfortunately, while I was there, I, I ran up against a professor that I just couldn't get along with and moved me into photography. And um, I, re I really fell in love with composition and putting images together. And uh, that led me to, to getting into cinematography and, and video and, and so forth. And I graduated from college in 91 in Minnesota you know, that was a time when, when everything was very linear. I mean, there was, I mean, I graduated from college and never said the word computer. And uh, it was all linear editing systems, linear everything. Um, you know, the cameras I shot on back then were, were a, a camera and a recording system. You know, most places had editors that had been around for 20 years and assistants for 10, and I, I couldn't get a job. I decided to move to Alaska and got up here and I was in Fairbanks at this guy's house in Fairbanks, Alaska. And um, he was a, a local video guy and somebody had told me about this guy, I go to his house and in his basement, Fairbanks, Alaska, he had this computer called an Avid. And it could edit 15 frames a second and create an edit decision list that would then, he would then come down to Anchorage to Syntax and online it. But this would, I mean, what, come on, I'm a college graduate. And, and there's a guy editing video on a computer in his basement in Fairbanks, Alaska. I was blown away. And um, <coughs> ever since then, I've just really thrown my life and passion in, into production. Editing has is, is always been my passion, specifically. I mean, now I'm doing a lot more management kind of things and, and the, the type, and music again back now to, to music. But uh, post-production editing, color correction, that's, that's always been my my passion in this business. Okay, and you, Levi? Um, well, you know, I grew up in Alaska, in Anchorage, and um, I, uh, I had a, you know, a lifetime love of doing theater and things like that and storytelling and production, but uh, as far as film goes, didn't really have a whole lot of exposure to any production, you know, growing up here. Didn't know who was doing it. There was very few people who were, and you know, seldom an opportunity for an intern at a young age to come in and learn. So, um, you know, but I, I loved making movies uh, with a home video camera as a kid because, you know, like everybody, you know, like all of us, we grew up watching them. And um, I guess as an Alaskan, you know, uh, movies were really important because you have to really pull yourself through all these long, dark months, and you know, you're trapped inside, and you kind of find escape, and you learn about. Um, growing up here, you learn about you know what else is out there. What are we as Americans by looking at these films and seeing these places and these stories? And um, so that was that was really important to me, and I really wanted to do that. Um, I, I got a you know I started nonlinear editing when I was about thirteen, and I was really fortunate because whereas Brad here had to, you know learn how to do all these cuts and everything, I just jumped right over that and, and had you know um, nonlinear is my first thing going from VCR to VCR to just whoa. And suddenly what I could do with my little home video camera with my friends at school and things like that just exploded and, um, you know, it is just awesome. So um, pretty much that's how uh, I got through school was just doing cool video projects instead of, you know, doing my history reports and things like that and I got a little experience that way. Um, 
And as a, as a young person, um, I grew up in this town with sort of uh, some unique life experiences and around some really interesting people. And um, I was offered the perspective early enough on to know that um, what I was learning from my lessons growing up was, was pretty unusual. And the stories I'd hear from the people who had been in Alaska for a very long time and have seen this town Anchorage change um, in a very short period of time really fascinated me. And I always really had the dream of creating um, a movie or a series or something like that based off these stories I heard growing up and my own experiences as well here. Um, but after I graduated high school, um, you know, I was planning on going to film school, uh, had it all kind of lined up, but then um, took a year off to kind of just have some fun, and then uh, honestly, it was uh, September 11th, um, boom. You know, it, uh, it scared me, man, because suddenly all this media was out there, you know, talking about how the economy could become unstable, and I was thinking, gosh, am I really ready to brave over those mountains and go into the real world in an unstable environment and really risk being an artist? And so I held off and um, I kind of started saving money for the future to see, you know, if, uh, if that, you know, what was going to happen. And I worked for a long time, managed to stay around uh, the broadcast field and still use editing skills and, um, you know, still operate a camera and things like that. But after years of putting that dream off, you know, I found myself in my late 20s um, really feeling like what I was doing with broadcast wasn't feeding my soul as an artist and, um, you know, feeling like, have I left? You know, have I left my dream behind? Have I let it slip away? What I did where I quit was I sort of started working with my father who had told me all these stories growing up about all these wild adventures he had and, you know, things he did with his, you know, people growing up and stuff. And I, uh, I wanted my dad to work with me to write his memoirs so I could capture some of these stories and film someday. And he was really reluctant to because, um, my father was a career criminal here, and he was uh, not really proud of a lot of the things he did in his youth. And he also didn't want to betray any kind of trust he, you know, he had in people who he was relating to back then. Um, so that was, uh, you know, it really took a lot of convincing for my father to be able to open up about that. I started to uh, get this idea to do sort of a, a comedy musical, because my dad would always tell me these stories with his guitar, you know, and a bottle of whiskey around the fire, and I thought, I'll just do this really fun thing, kind of in that style, to show my dad that I could get people to really be into these stories and combine a lot of the elements. And um, so uh, shortly after I wrote this film, uh, after my dad read it and loved it and laughed his, you know, ass off, um, he passed away unexpectedly in his sleep. And that was just that push of madness that I needed to just digest that grief and go, okay, I'm making this film, I'm taking a chance on my dream, it's about my dad, I'm portraying someone like my dad, Woo! boom, full force, my whole life, everything I did was about film. Um, every dollar I had made went to that movie and um, I spent all my time trying to, to reach other people in the community to, uh, to get involved because um, you know, I knew I needed a lot of help. I wasn't an experienced filmmaker. I had an idea for story and for craft, but um, I lacked the experience and the talent that, you know, I would have gotten if I had stick, stuck with my career plan from, from high school. So I didn't know where to start because um, I didn't really know how to get involved in the, the network in Alaska for filmmakers, and I didn't really think that there were um, a whole lot of people really competitively doing it, and so I just, started with the few people I knew in broadcast and started taking names and calling people and literally going door to door with, uh, with my script. And I made um, every, I storyboarded every single shot and colored it, went way overboard just so I could go, take me seriously, see my vision. And, um, and I went there and I sung the narrative to them. I stood outside Starbucks and I'd sing the whole song while people walked by going, who's that freak? But that's what it took just to get people to go, okay, this guy has a vision, let's listen to him. After literally like a couple of months of just going out there time and time again, I started to find that there were plenty of other independent artists who were itching to do, you know, follow their dream in filmmaking in a competitive way just as much as me. So um, slowly but surely, I think that as um, these people saw that I was going to be able to bring a budget and that I was going to be able to bring this vision into fruition and, and provide tools, um, they got involved and they donated their time just for that opportunity. And we ended up having well over 100 people work on the film and um, turned out to be just an incredible experience that uh, just started 
you know, started my dream up. And that was almost four years ago, and I'm proud to say I've been working on creative vision for film ever since. So how did you two connect up then? I met Brad. Um, Brad was one of the people who um, I actually met through going out there and, and just talking to people in production because um, Brad's band, The Rebuttals, uh, are almost primarily all made of production people who have worked in the field in one way or another. And so I connected with one of those guys through you know, putting myself out there, and he invited me to come over and talk at their band practice. And you know, a few beers later, I'm sitting there going, um, this is the soundtrack. And I just sat there laughing because I do. this is it. This is the group of guys to be with. They have, you know, plenty of advice, plenty of experience to bring to the table, and they have the sound to bring my vision to life. And, um, you know, Brad was actually the person who took the most convincing because I don't think he liked me at first. Oh, that's true. When I, when I first met Levi, I, I was not impressed. I was, I was extremely impressed with the storyboards, but I wasn't impressed with the story. I'll be really honest, and and I, I see this this storyboard, and the very first shot is you know this girl's ass, you know, and and it goes downhill from there. You might say, and I go, oh my God, this how, how am I gonna, you know, this is not this is not the work that I'm doing right now. You know, I've seen so not that I didn't want them to do it, but I'd seen so many people come and say, hey, I'm gonna do something like this, but never follow through. A couple months later, we get a call, and hey, we're doing the first shoot. And it, this was a small shoot. This was the band and, and Levi and a couple other background pieces. Yet I could see that they were doing it right. You know, they were shooting it right. They were shooting things that made sense. It was lit properly. There was makeup. I mean, you know, again, I could tell that, that this was professional and I was impressed. And then a couple of weeks later was the start of the, the bar brawl scenes. And uh, again, now we're talking about I don't know, there was what, 50 crew, or 50 cast people in the bar, mm -hmm. and then maybe another 15 crew. So mm -hmm. there's probably 70, 60, 70 people in some of, these, some of these weekends. Now here I'm meeting this guy that wants to do films, and, and not only this guy, but a crew of talented people that want to make films, that, that are demonstrating an ability to make films, a talent to do it, and, and then the ability to finish it. And since then, Levi and I have become very close friends and, and you know, co, co-workers in Crooked Pictures. But yeah, no, I didn't like the guy at all at first. I like you. <laughs> dangerous man there ever was is a man who's gone and lost his cause. Killing Big Bad Jim is all I have left to do. We talked a little about about you always being in Alaska. Where, what brought you to Alaska? I have never met as many interesting and unique and talented people in as small, you know, condensed a population. I mean, obviously, you can't call Alaska a small place, but population-wise, there is a tremendous amount of talented people. And in fact, I'm always bothered by the fact that so many times Alaskans tend to put each other down. You know, someone goes, "Oh, you're a filmmaker. Well, if you were really any good, you'd be in L.A." Well, you know, I, I, you know, with, with Way Up North, Levi was specifically offered the opportunity to move to L.A. Before I moved back up to Alaska, the companies that I was working for, Pinnacle and Avid, they wanted me to stay in, in the San Francisco area at that time. You know, tremendous amount of money was on the line. But I, my passion for the lifestyle of Alaska, the, the, the pace, you know, I, I choose to live here. I love, I love Alaska. 
So let's look at Levi, your decision to stay here as opposed to going other places when you had such an amazing offer. Mm -hmm. Well, it was really exciting um, after we, we won the Beverly Hills Film Festival for, for Best Short because we got a lots of, we met lots of people, made a lot of connections, and got a lot of interesting offers. Um, I was, was asked to come write and direct on some projects, and um, you know, I was really excited about that. And, um, but I, you know, I had to kind of stop and look down that trail and go, okay, where is that gonna take me for my career? And you know, is that a place I'd like to live? And yeah, it would be amazing to be on Hollywood, you know, movie sets and in studios and things, but it's the people and the pace. Um, Alaska's my home, and I don't think that I would enjoy living full time in LA. And you know, I'm an Alaskan, I'm independent, and I have a vision of what I wanna do. And um, I don't really want to tell myself that I have to join that corporate structure of how the industry is because I'm not a technician. I'm not somebody who's going to work their way up in crews. I have a story, and if that story resonates, I'll be able to do it wherever I want if there is a, you know, a following for it. So what kind of films would you like to make for the future now? Well, um, what we're doing with Crooked Pictures is specifically focusing on our in-house production and um, development of the series uh, of the stories I've been working on since I was a kid. And so what I've been doing for the last two years is uh, writing out a, a three-part series, like a book series that we plan on releasing as um, an e-book because it allows us to reach uh, a market outside of Alaska, you know, um, and build uh, you know a following and an audience to basically bring more money into the state to be able to do the production we want to do. And in the immediate, allows me to do what I love, writing these stories and capture um, the vision that I have for them. You know, because ebook technology is amazing in the, the sense that it's more than just literature, it's an experience, and it's a multimedia experience, so we can really kind of create our whole feel of where we're going. Um, one thing I learned from um, my experience talking to some of the connections I made out of state uh, is that they are very interested in breaking free from where, you know, production's always been done, like LA and places like this, because it's so saturated. And the economy right now is affecting everybody in every place. And even though there's a lot of money there, only the biggest players are getting it. And so they're looking to branch out and find people who are kind of coming out of nowhere who will you know, be easier to afford. And also they're looking to shoot their movies outside of those towns to save, if they can save money, uh, like our film incentives, for example. People were really surprised what we could do in way up north with, with our budget. They said that they thought it would be about four times the amount we spent if we had made it in LA. So when they found out what it was, they were just like, what? We want to come make movies in Alaska. It's, you know, we could pioneer it. Um, so I think that's what I would really like to see for Alaska. And that's my dream with uh, the, the three, you know, book series that I'm doing is that if that resonates with an audience, um, you know, and if that we can show a following for that, that I think that it would be, um, you know, a great series. So what advice do you have for future filmmakers? Use the resources that are out there. Talk to, you know, uh, talk to, Look for other, look for groups that are in your, whatever. I mean, I don't know. Just do it. Don't, there's no reason not to, not to do it. If you have a story to tell, tell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Brad. I mean, all the tools are in their hands. Um, and, you know, this industry is becoming more independent than ever. And, and it's relying less and less on the big studio for development and, um, and a lot of those resources. So I think the hardest part for a filmmaker uh, when, when you're starting out is knowing what do you really want to do because you want to make movies and there are so many different fields. Um, so I think until you have that figured out, just do as many as you can. Be involved in, and help as many friends who are doing them as you can and play as many different roles as possible till you find the one that works for you. Um, if you find yourself in a, in a production role working um, you know, more on the technical aspects, um, you know, start getting into the industry and do as many professional films and get your resume built up. If you are an artist with something to say, don't settle for less. Don't feel like you have to be that guy working up the chain. Um, because if you really have something to say, you have the tools to get it out there. And if that resonates with people, you'll get noticed and people want to hear more from you. So I guess that's just it. Um, don't be afraid to be independent. Don't let people tell you you can't do something. Uh, never give up and uh, 
Goonies never say die. Goonies never say die. Ever. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Well, that is it for our episode of Alaska Filmmakers. We'd like to thank our host, Out North Theater, and our guest, Levi Taylor and Brad Swenson, for speaking with us today. If you would like to learn more about Crooked Pictures, you can find the links on their contact information on our website, alaskafilmmakers.com. Thank you for joining us, and remember, everyone has a story to tell.